How to Replace Motorcycle Brake Lines Step 1 is to open your brake fluid reservoir and remove the fluid inside. Brake fluid is very corrosive and easily damages surfaces on your bike, so it's very helpful to cover the area with a rag the best you can. Whether you have a remote fluid reservoir or an integrated one like mine here, once the cap comes off, you'll find a rubber diaphragm. Go ahead and remove that and that'll give you access to the brake fluid. I'm going to use a syringe to suck all the fluid out of mine. If you don't have something like this, you can also just put a wad of paper towels in there to soak it up too. Once that's done, go ahead and put your cap on temporarily to keep dust and debris out while we move on to the next step. These banjo bolts are what hold your hoses in place, but before you take anything apart, it's a good idea to take a couple of pictures and make good mental notes of the routing of the hoses. Once you're confident, you'll remember where everything goes go ahead and start to loosen the banjo bolts. You will get a little bit of residual fluid left inside, so place a rag underneath while you loosen the bolt to catch any fluid. And with the banjo bolt removed, you'll find two crush washers that seal everything together. Make sure you get both of those out of the way. Now that the hose is free, if you want, you can take that banjo bolt and just temporarily reinstall it into the master cylinder or caliper. This is helpful if you're working in especially dusty environments or if you intend to leave your bike apart for a while just helps keep everything clean and free of debris getting into your brake system. Now that both banjo bolts are loose, the only thing left holding this onto my bike is a couple of brackets. We'll go ahead and remove those now. If you don't want to lose things like this or forget where they go, just temporarily reinstall it on your bike. That way you can't forget. The new hoses we're going in with are a set of Galfer steel braided lines. Inside we've got the brake line, a bag of hardware, and of course the very important stickers. Taking a look at the hardware for the front line, you can see we've got a mounting bracket, 
the rubber protective sleeve that goes under the bracket for my bike, a couple of banjo bolts, and the copper crush washers. Goffer gives me two extra for each connection, so if you have a few left over, nothing to worry about. They also clearly note which end is the master cylinder. That's helpful. For the rear hose on my bike, no brackets or anything to mess with, just a couple of banjo bolts and some crush washers. Identify which end is the master cylinder for your new hose, and go ahead and fish it up through the bike. And this is the part where those pictures you took earlier might just come in handy. So to assemble your new hose, first start with the banjo bolt and one crush washer. Then the banjo fitting, which is the end of the hose, slides on. And then a second crush washer. Then that whole fitting will thread into your master cylinder or brake caliper or possibly an ABS unit which is a good time to mention, my bike is very simple as you see. One line, one caliper, no ABS. If your bike has multiple calipers or you have an ABS unit where the lines go in and out of, don't be intimidated. The principle of everything you're gonna do is the exact same you see here. You just have more lines to install, that's it. I'm starting with the master cylinder, but I'm not gonna tighten it all the way. Snug but just loose enough so that I can still swivel the end of the hose around to get the alignment just how I like it before I torque everything down. Next up is the brake caliper. Leave that one just a little bit loose also because we still have to install that bracket. Once you're confident everything is hooked up and routed just like it's supposed to be, turn your handlebars left and right a few times to make sure you have no clearance issues. Then you can torque the bolts down. For my bike, my manual recommends 18 foot-pounds of torque. Now you can begin to fill the system back up with brake fluid. If you're not sure what kind of fluid your bike takes, check the reservoir cap or check your service manual. Now a quick piece of advice about brake fluid. Always use a fresh, unopened container of brake fluid for filling your system. That old, already open container of brake fluid that's been laying around in your garage is likely no good. That's because brake fluid is hygroscopic 
meaning it will absorb water. So an open container of brake fluid that's been left sitting around for some time will absorb water and render it ineffective. Instead, pick yourself up a fresh container of brake fluid, or if you're hitting the track, this would be a good time to upgrade to some high boiling point racing fluid. I'll leave that up to you. For now, we're just gonna go with this regular stuff for my bike. Start by filling up your brake fluid reservoir, then locate the bleeder screw on your caliper. I won't go into too much detail on bleeding brakes in this because I have another video for that, but I'll briefly cover it. Place a piece of clear tubing over the end of the bleeder screw, and then run the other end of that tube into a container of some sort. This is to contain the mess. Like we said, brake fluid is very corrosive and you don't want it going all over the place. Go ahead and crack the bleeder screw open. You can open it a little bit more than you see there if you want. That's because your lines are completely dry and getting fluid moving can be a little bit challenging. Start by opening the screw, pumping the lever, and letting the system gravity bleed itself. If you have any trouble getting things moving, open up the screw a little bit more if necessary and just pump that lever until you'll start to see brake fluid coming through. Once you get fluid moving, things get a little bit easier from there. From that point, it's just bleeding the brakes like normal, purging all the air that's trapped in the lines through until you have nothing but pure brake fluid coming through the other end. To do this, open the bleed screw, pull the brake lever, close the bleed screw, release the brake lever. Open, pull, close, release. Make sure to keep an eye on that fluid reservoir and don't let it go dry. If you let it go all the way down, you'll suck air back into the system. Repeat this process until all the air is purged out, then you're good to go. Your rear brakes are no different. You've got a couple of banjo bolts holding the hose in place, a brake pedal instead of a brake lever, a bleeder screw on the back of your caliper, and then a brake fluid reservoir, which I don't have one of those. Anyway, moving on. You've already seen the front, so I'll cover this a bit quickly, just to recap. Drain your system of all the brake fluid, and then go ahead and remove both the banjo bolts to remove your brake line. Next, route your new brake line in place and assemble both your banjo bolts hand tight.
Then once you're confident everything's routed just like it should be, go ahead and torque it down. This is a good example for you to see that sometimes when you torque the banjo bolts, it kind of wants to twist the brake line with it. So hold the very end of the brake line in place while you torque the banjo bolt if you want the line to stay put just where you want it. Same for this one. Hold the line, and I'm also trying to hold the master cylinder in place so I don't break anything while I torque the bolt. Once everything's hooked up, we can fill the system just like we did on the front. Open your bleeder screw, fill the reservoir, and gravity bleed the system, pumping the brake pedal a couple times if you need to get things moving. Once you get some fluid flow, you can bleed the system just like normal. The last thing you need to do before you go for a ride is you need to test everything for leaks. Clean everything off. Your reservoir, all the banjo fittings. That way you can clearly tell if something's leaking or not. To test for leaks, go ahead and pump your brake lever like a bunch. Personally, I do at least 100 times for the lever and the pedal. You can also wrap a cable tie around and hold the brake lever down for at least a few minutes to pressurize the system that way. Once you're confident you've tested the system enough, go ahead and check all your connections for leaks. If all is good, that's it, you're done. You're ready to enjoy that sweet feel that comes with a set of steel braided lines. Thanks for watching.